Thank you very much, Kate. And, and I will keep these brief because I actually know that we're a little past time already and uh, everyone's probably brain dead after two days of this because we are at the end of two days of what I have found to be very thoughtful and very diverse presentations. I can tell you for certain that the planning committee for this workshop feels that we have achieved our objectives of identifying challenges. And really and truly this success is primarily due to the engagement of you, our audience. The volume of questions you have posed and the discussion stimulated by those questions, both on the chat and amongst the planning committee is enormous. Um, this, this, uh, this response and these questions are going to be invaluable towards informing the many stakeholders as to how we need to tweak the system moving forward. So thank you. With regard to how we change things and how we use this information, I will tell you for an absolute certainty that Dr. Eileen Lacey and I, as co-chairs of the uh, American Society of Mammalogists Animal Care and Use Committee, we have very deliberately delayed the next revision of the ASM guidelines specifically so that we can include modifications based on the insights that have come out of this workshop. Far more importantly, the challenges voiced here have been heard by the regulatory and policymaking agencies, not just in the United States, but around the world that play really diverse roles in ensuring appropriate and ethical use of wild animals in research and education. As I've said repeatedly, these wild animals are the property of people, of the people. It is our responsibility to ensure that these wild populations endure and are safeguarded. That, challenges, that challenge requires acquiring and sharing detailed knowledge of their biology. And gee, that sounds a lot like research and education, which is really what we're focused on. So the last thought is that as we move forward, we must recognize the necessity to tailor our use and oversight standards and expectations to fit the wild taxa that we wish to preserve, rather than forcing these animals into a framework and expectations that were designed for domesticated species. With that, I'm gonna call it quits and I will turn it back over to, um, let's see, who is next? I guess it will be Kareem for the very last comments. It's been an honor to hear from these experts and be able to share their perspectives with all of you. This has been an extraordinary workshop. In opening the event yesterday, I mentioned the animal welfare challenges in research and education on wildlife and biologically diverse animal species. Today in closing the workshop, I believe that we have taken concrete steps for this process to unfold. Please continue these conversations, ramp up discussions, and follow up with questions and answers to move the process forward. Freely reach out to ILAR staff for any assistance you may need from us. Our sincerest gratitude goes to leadership at the National Science Foundation, Division of Integrative Organismal Systems, as the major workshop sponsor. Their dedication to excellence in animal research is truly remarkable. The National Academy of Sciences and ILAR are also very grateful for the significant contributions to this workshop made by the National Institutes of Health Office of the Director, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Office of Counterterrorism and Emerging Threats, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, Animal Care. We also appreciate the generous efforts of the speakers, the workshop planning committee, the full membership of the National Academy's Roundtable on Science and Welfare of Laboratory Animal Use, and the National Academy's staff team. Thank you all for participating in this workshop.